Hi and welcome, I'm Andreas. A while ago I ran into this jointer thickness planer combination. Well, I didn't run into it literally, I stumbled on it. Well, you know what I mean. So it's a used machine, the Electrobecum HC300, a German manufacturer which has since come under the um, blanket of Metabo and it looked alright to me and it was a good price so I bought it and today I'd like to check on it, check if everything's accurate, if I have to need, if I have to do some refurbishing or anything and luckily the owner had kept the manual so I have that to go by and I have some new blades to put in so if you want to join me in putting this to good and usable state again welcome and let's get going. So as I said, the machine seemed to be in a good state. Um, all the accessories came with it. The manual was there. Um, there's this um, blade guard or yeah, whatever you call that, which protects the drum here. And um, the fence is complete and the, the electric stuff seemed to be all right. There's even this pin and this piece of aluminum which are to be used um, for changing the blades and so on and for adjusting this. So um, I think it's in good shape, but now I'm going to take off some of the covers to look inside to see if inside everything's all right as well. So far everything looks okay. In here there's not much dirt. It's just a little bit of grease and um, wood chips. So I'm going to clean the whole thing out a little bit and then see um, what else I have to do. The table goes up and down fairly well, um, but I suppose I will have to um, grease or lubricate these rods that move it up and down a little. So then it should be even better and well, Apart from that, I'm really pleased that this thing seems to be in good shape. So everything's reasonably clean and works well and turns well. I also checked these kickback protectors here. They are very important because they prevent the workpiece from kicking back and shooting out at the back. So you have to make sure if you have a refurbished jointer that they really go easily so that they really, uh, that they don't get stuck up in the upward position because then they can't do their work. So now that this is done, I'm going to check the tension of the belts and the chains inside here um, and then I'm going to go over to changing the blades. So this is the one that turns the drum for the, with the blades. This seems to be okay. And this is the one that turns the drum which moves the wood. Seems to be okay as well. And this chain here is for the spindles to move the table up and down and this seems to be a bit loose so I'm going to tension this a little bit more. The 
it's actually this wheel here that is moved to the front or to the back. If you move it to the back, the chain loosens. If you move it to the front, the chain gets more tension. That's the wrong pin. This was included and this is supposed to be the pin to, to stop the drum here, but it's too thick. I have to use something else. Now after cleaning everything it's time to put the blades back in. I realized that the old ones had some serious damage so I got new ones. So um, I think I'm going to have the other ones resharpened but now I have a set to spare. And so let's try and get these accurately put back in. I've never done this before so I'm really um, curious as to how well this goes. Let's do that. So this is the jointer blade which has these long holes which um, are for letting through the screws. Here are five screws and the blade goes in here and the screws then hold the blade in place. The screws go into this clamping bar which goes behind the blade. So this clamping bar pulls the, the blade against this surface here and then it's firmly into this it sits firmly in, in this drum and you realize or notice that there are these slits here as well. They receive two set screws um, where you insert the blade here and then the set screws can be used to up to, to um, lower the blade or to raise it so that it's absolutely accurate. So now all these parts have to go in first the blade then this clamping bar and then the screws and um, what's important is to tighten the screws only loosely at the beginning so you can still adjust the blade in its height and then when you really tighten the screws to start at the middle so that any tension you create can wander outward and go out otherwise the tension might build up in the center and you don't want that because that might actually then damage the blade or change its shape and so on. So let's try and get this in. What I really don't like is these screws are really hard to tighten and they shouldn't be. Thank you. 
Okay, now after a lot of fiddling, I think I figured it out. Uh, let me show you. I had these screws really loose, so the blade moved around and it moved up and down just by turning the drum. And so I couldn't really adjust it properly. So what I found out is I have to tighten them and then just turn a half make a half turn back or a one turn back so that the screws are not tight but not really loose either. And now the the manual says the blade has to be so high that this gauge here is taken from this arrow to that arrow when you turn the drum. So what I have to do is turn this, put this here, and now when I turn Wait a second, once again. It has to be taken one step further. And it doesn't at the moment, so here's the set screw. have to take this blade up a little. Once again. Not really high enough yet. So, don't know about you, but it seems like setting jointer blades is not the most fun activity. I leave it at that. So the last thing that remains to do is um, rubbing the table here underneath with Silver Glide, which is a dry lubricant for woodworking machines, which makes sliding the wood across easier and also protects against rust. And then it seems that I can do the first test. Yeah. So this thing is finally set up and working. This is the first test piece that I made and I'm very pleased. It's very flat and everything seems to be okay. Setting up the blade was a lot of hassle, much more than I had thought, but now it seems to be okay. 
Um, I'm very pleased with that because the next project that I need this machine for is already planned. The material is already over there and I really need to get started on that one because it needs to be finished for a certain day. Now, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, I'd appreciate a thumbs up or a comment. And if you want to share this video with your friends, I'd really appreciate that. And for you, if you want to watch inspiring videos and learn along with me, subscribe to my channel, hit the bell so you don't miss the next video. I usually publish one every couple of weeks on a Sunday morning, European time. Hope to see you back soon. Bye, take care and enjoy woodworking.